Hi, this is Math 8, Chapter 1, Lesson 4, working on powers of monomials. Recall that when we look at powers of monomials, what we're going to do is we're going to take them and we're going to multiply those things together. But let's take a look here. First of all, on the outside of this number, we have 6t to the fifth, and this is all squared. So I'm going to take that squared number, and I'm going to square the 6, and I'm also going to square this t to the fifth power. So first of all, 6 squared, I'm going to rewrite it here, 6 squared, will be written like this and t to the fifth is still squared as such, but I could look at this as really being t times t to the, sorry, five times two power as such. So to write this over again, six squared is actually 36, and t, five times two is 10, becomes written like that, so I have a 36 t to the 10th power. I'm gonna look at number three here. Again, we're going to look at number three. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because it's just not quite clear enough for y'all. See, that looks a little better. A little bit. Uh, number three, we're going to take our three and we're going to distribute over here. This becomes 12 to the third power, and this becomes k to the six times three power. All right, 12 to the third power in our notes here. 12 to the third power is actually 1,728. That's what 12 to the third power is. And k becomes k to the 6 times 3, which is 18. And that's my solution for that one there. Moving to number 5. Number 5. I want to do 4 to the 7th power. Okay. And that becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. Which is a crazy number. That's for sure. All right. Um, it's actually 16,384. That part's not super relevant what we're doing, but that's fine. The most important thing is that you're understanding what to do with the variables. So we have D, and we have 3 times 7, which is 21. And then we have E, which is 5 times 7 for 35. That's the most crucial part of this lesson today. Not so much can you do 4 to the 7th power, power, because a calculator can do that for you. Moving on to number 7, though, what we're going to do is we're going to have 7 squared, and that squared, and then that squared. So if we kind of go backwards here, what we really have is we have 7 to the, let's see, 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 times 2 is 8. And we can leave that there for now. All right. Let's look at number 9. Number 9, we're going to take this value, this fraction, and we're going to square the fraction. So we end up with 3 squared is 9, and 5 squared is 25. So there's my fraction squared. And now I'm going to do a, my a value, which becomes 6 times 2 is 12, and my b value, which is 9 times 2 for 18. Number 11, same idea. I'm going to do 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and I'm going to do the cubed value of that. And then p becomes 5 times 3 for 15. If I wanted to figure that out, I would do 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 on my calculator to end up with the true value of 0 0.216 p to the 15th, and I could write it as such. For the last one here, let's take a look at number 13. We have a square. We're supposed to express the area as a monomial. For to find, to find the area of a square, it's the length times the width, or the, like, the length squared. So basically what they're saying is, well, I have 9c to the 6d, and because it's a square, we're going to square the whole thing. So by squaring the whole thing, 9 squared is 81. c to the 6 squared, 6 times 2 is 12. And d to the first, 1 times 2 is 2. So my answer becomes 81c to the 12 and d squared. Hope that helps a little bit. Good luck.